sitting up in my sewing room and my chair has been stolen and it's in a room with somebody who's asleep so I'm sitting in my little ghost chair so it sort of looks like I'm floating that's why it's also a little tight on my hip not very comfortable could not sew in this chair it's really for guests to sit in or if I do fittings for somebody so I'm gonna do my best to sit in it and do this video <laughs> I'm wearing one of my favorite tops I love this pattern and it's in the cherries and I will tell you a secret I dropped coffee on it and I have a big stain that was right here in the front so I turned my shirt around so it may be only for videos now and I'm wearing it backwards but at least I can still get a, get some use out of it because it is one of my favorites I have not been able to get the stain out grab yourself a cup of your favorite whatever get comfy we're gonna talk books today during the holiday I did a two video series on cozy mysteries I'm a reader and a lot of you are too. It was so fun to, I got some new series to read out of that. I love that so much. I've had some people ask me about a sewing reference and I have quite a large sewing reference library. So I thought I would share with you today some of the books that are in my um, sewing library. As I was doing this, one of the things that inspired me to do this was we were unpacking, we've moved a lot. I have a big tub full of books we opened it up and books I thought were gone forever were in there and they were some of my favorites. I kind of put them all together and thought they had just disappeared, but they were still there. I'm so happy about it. So uh, seeing that inspired me to do this video besides the few that had actually sent me some questions. So I'm going to kind of divide this up into the type of book. I think it might be the easiest way. So if there's something specific you're looking for, there are so many references out there. There's a ton just on the internet. Um, so I'm hoping this will help you if you'd like to have a tangible book in your hands. I hope this will help you find what you are looking for. In that box was actually a sketch that I did a long time ago. I have no idea when or why. So I'm thinking this is a pretty ancient ancient drawing. So let's start at the beginning with just useful books for all sewists. And I would like to mention Reader's Digest. You may have seen this book. It is the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Sewing. And as a basic reference for all things sewing, it is excellent. Um, they have a couple of these complete guides to books. I have used this in all of my classrooms. It has great information about textiles, great information about reading a pattern. It's from the very basic to more advanced, like doing fly front zippers. Um, it has all the different types of stitching, hiding your stitches when, if you're doing some hand work, clipping your edging. It even has tailoring information in it. It is really comprehensive. And this is a book, most of these, if they're available, I'll put a link to them in my Amazon shop, which I'll have a link down below too. But this is one you can go pick up at like second, at a secondhand bookstore like um, Half Price Books. I have seen these in the Salvation Army um, bookstores. I've seen these at Goodwill. Like check your secondhand book references for quite a few of these because they may show up there. And when we lived in Kansas City, there was a... Um, a thrift a thrift shop called Savers and they had really great book section. I loved going into Savers and looking at their books and this is one you probably could put, pick up there. Highly recommend. Definitely at the top of my list for basic sewing reference. Reader's Digest. And I have even one, another one for um, a, a second book coming up here in a minute. So that's book number one. You can see I took down my overlock machine so I could use this space for, uh, for my books. This is, uh, I need to replace it. The back cover is completely gone. This is, and it does not come bound like this. This was a book that kind of came bound like this and um, I had the binding put on it, or I didn't, my boss did, back when I worked in Tulsa at the Fabric Stash before I ever had children. This is Claire Schaefer's Fabric and Sewing Guide. And it, again, extremely comprehensive, lots of pictures. Um, it was, the one that I have was written in the 90s. I think that's when it first came out. 
Claire Schaefer it ha is an excellent reference, uh, and it has some color photographs in it. It has less pictures than you might think. It has a lot more um, text, but it is a very good book. I really liked it, and I did use this a lot. If you're not starting out, I've, it's a great book to have, but it may not be the one. This one is even more advanced. This is by um, Roberta Carr, and this is the um, Art of Couture, and it explains what makes something couture, uh, some of the sewing techniques for couture. It has gorgeous full color pictures in it, and I'm pretty sure my Claire Schaefer book was signed, and the piece that was signed has been lost, so that one's no longer signed. Great book, beautiful full color. This one, again, is a 1990s. My version is the 1990 book. I have not looked to see if she has an updated book or not, um, but it really does explain a lot about couturier sewing. If you really want to elevate your sewing techniques, this would be, I'll show you the front, this would be the one. Singer, I have, I'm just for an ancient book. This is the Singer Songbook, and I have quite a few of these that I picked up that are old. Um, I'm gonna look and see if I can find it. Because I really love an old book. This one was um, 1949. It's not as comprehensive as the Reader's Digest book, but it is very good and it has some stuff on some home sewing and it's just fun. And it does even have a few color photos in it. It has lots of drawings. Um, it even talks about your color family, like what colors look best on whom. And it's, I think it's super, it's one of the color pages that they have in here. And it has for light blondes and it shows the colors for medium blondes, if you have gray hair, if you have red or auburn, medium brunette, and dark brunette. And I think it's interesting that it's specific to the hair color and not the skin tone, because let's face it, you can have one skin tone and a totally different hair color. Like It's, it's interesting that that's how they chose to do it. Um, I guess it's assuming that's your natural hair color, not the color you've chosen. <laughs> New one's out, but this is my 1949 edition of that. I have one more Claire Schaefer book. This is the complete uh, book of sewing shortcuts. And this is a great, this is a little like the uh, Reader's Digest book. It has nice glossary, great photographs, and um, really good reference guide. Claire Schaefer's complete guide to sewing shortcuts. Now let's talk pattern making for just a minute. Um, you're already sewing and now you're wanting to work more on patterns. My, uh, I have a wonderful flat pattern book that I cannot find. It's one of the books that still has not been discovered. It was my textbook of college. It is available. Sometimes you can pick it up on the secondhand market. I've seen it quite a bit. I think I'm gonna go ahead and order it again because I can't find it. It is an expensive book. I, I mean, when I bought it secondhand in 1989, it was maybe $80 um, then, and I have a pretty tattered book. <laughs> I know the back cover had fallen off at one time. I cannot find it. I love that book. I used it so much. I need to order another one. So I'll put a picture up of the book I'm talking about. Excellent for flat pattern design. Wonderful for grading. If you just want to understand your patterns better, this book, just leafing through this book, will make patterns much more understandable. There is another way to make patterns called draping. I love draping. It is so creative and fun. So if you are a tactile and creative person who likes to just manipulate and play, draping is the way to go. And I'd like to do a video on it. This is my textbook from college and it's called The Art of Fashion Draping. You can order this book still to this day. This is an old one. I'm looking at my 1989, which was, so I got a new edition at the time. I've taken off my little stickers that were on the side. Superb book. The illustrations are so good at explaining what you're doing. Lovely. So if you would like to try draping, you need two things, a dress form and fabric. Pins are great, sometimes a little marking pen. Seldom, especially when you're starting out, do you drape in your final fabric. You drape in a muslin or a inexpensive same weight and type of fabric and then you take that pattern make a paper pattern of it and then cut out your fabric your uh, fashion fabric there's a lot to it but i love draping it is one of my favorites so this is the book this one explains it so well there is updated versions of this i know you can still get this i've seen it on amazon another one that i just got on amazon 
and it has to do with that whole draping thing, is this book um, on V&A. Now, this comes from, I believe, Japan. It is not in English. It is completely in Japanese. However, it has got superb uh, illustrations. I have an Android phone and I, my Google will auto-translate. I can just put my phone over it and it will auto-translate for me so I can look up the measurements, etc. Pretty easy. And they even have a lot of the patterns are on graph paper. So if you've done a little bit of pattern work and you love the draping and the design of V&A, think late 20s on, think glamorous Hollywood 1930s, that's V&A. They have taken quite a few of V&A's famous designs and made the patterns in the book that you could then copy out. So, V&A. This one kind of goes into historic costume, which we will be talking about. But first, if you are a sewist who is trying to make a business out of it, this little book called Sew to Success by Kathleen Spike is the one I used back in the day. Um, and it has, this is a very old one. I, this one is author, or is um, signed by the author in 1995. So this was signed right before I had my first child. Um, I, I did use this. I did sew for people for a long time and I used her little book. It has, um, and of course this is old, she has um, templates in there for you to make for your um, fitting sheets, for invoices, for all that stuff. For back in the day before you could just go and download it online, she has all that. And she explains how you choose your pricing so that you don't undercut yourself. So even if you are not, if you're an Etsy seller or anything like that, this might help you with price setting because a lot of times Etsy sellers or anyone who's out there, they don't charge what they're worth. And then you'll get the one person who overcharges who thinks they're worth a lot more than they are. And this helps you know, know where to set your pricing. It's a very good book if you're interested in sewing or crafting, anything like that as a business. It is Sew to Success by Kathleen Spike. Inside that book, what made me laugh is my parents' 50th wedding anniversary invitation, um, which was a long time ago. They've been married 60, five years, like this is 15, 16 years old. But anyway, that was inside that book. Interesting, I don't know why, but it was. So that's the only one I have for sewing as a business. Let's just talk inspiration for a minute. Um, I love to just look at beautiful sewing things and um, art, anything like that to get me inspired or consider, you know, make me think about things in a new way. And I have these are books on kimonos. This one shows how to tie obies. These are from the 80s. Um, I had a friend from who lived and was an exchange student from Japan who actually gave me one of these books and then I ordered one. So I have this these two books completely in Japanese, but so inspirational. This one in particular, because it has got the stunning fabrics. If you've ever looked at Japanese kimonos, and this one says how to accessorize it, step by step, how to tie the obis, but the fabrications, just to look, and that's what I remember doing, was just stunned by the gorgeous fabrications that are in this books. This one even shows how to sit down and get up in your kimono, like all the etiquette, just fun and cultural, but also very inspirational and the designs are um, lovely. The fabrications on kimonos are some of the best. I love them. This book I got because I am not the great, I can, I can draw, but I'm not like amazing at it. And I got this to help me with some of my fashion illustration and to kind of break me out of my very um, strict way that I was drawing. And this is um, Fashion Illustration Today by Nicholas Drake. And it is, it's got lots of the designs of very famous fashion illustrators throughout time. And it's pretty fun. Some of these have been like in magazines. Um, and I, it, for me, this was excellent. This was very helpful because I had a one way I thought I had to draw 
and this helped me rethink that. Um, I also love books like this. This is a big coffee table book. This way is a ton. I stole this off of my shelf downstairs. This is Fashion the Century of the Designer from 1900 to 1999, and it's got Hollywood, it's got Chanel, I know she's problematic, um, still a great fashion house. It has um, Guy La Roche, all kinds of different designers. It's broken down by era and just takes you through. So if you want to see how fashion has changed and how things have circled back, full color, lots of the supermodels of the time are in that book and it is very inspirational and it's just fun. It's just fun to see the history and that one kind of ties in fashion history but it's more modern. And then there are loads of books like this one. This is the Yves Saint Laurent book. And this is just sort of a, a compendium. It has lots of picture, gorgeous pictures, full color, another coffee table book. A lot of these were in magazines, but it also tells his story. It definitely has more pictures than text. The text is minuscule. I will just tell you, it is like a, a nine <laughs> if you're looking at um, when you drop down and you choose your, the size of your font, I would say this is like an eight or a nine. The text is definitely considered less important than the photographs in this book, but it is fun and there's tons of them. And I just noticed recently on Amazon that there is a publisher who's put out sort of a series on some of the big fashion houses, especially the couturier designers. And I would like to pick those up. There's some, especially like Alexander McQueen and some of those that are not with us anymore that just really changed um, fashion that I would love to have um, some pictures, some, some picture books of. So these are my my inspiration block series. I need a thesaurus. This is my inspiration group. Let's just talk a little bit about historic fashion. Now I love historic fashion. I don't do a lot of sewing in historic. I've made some some folkwear and some things, but I just think it's interesting. I love to see how things change and evolve and grow, and also how we revisit things, and you can see how things are inspired by others. The one of my favorite classes I took was my historic costume class. This, and it was really just a history class, but it was super interesting, and I thought it was well taught. And the book we used in that class was actually, the teacher made her own book. So it was a compilation of a whole lot of things that she put together, and that was what we studied from instead of a single book. This, however, is an excellent historic costume and pictures by Braun and Schneider, and it's not color pictures, but it's excellent plates um, throughout time, and it tells you the century, very detailed, excellent, just no text, <laughs> no text, all pictures. So great one just to look at as eye candy, but also inspiration, very good book. Um, another one similar is History Co Costume by Carl Kohler. Now this one has lots of pictures, but it also has lots of text. So if you're interested in understanding the background or behind the scenes, this one has a lot more of that information. And it um, breaks down, uh, again, minuscule writing. It breaks down um, some of the pattern making, some of the jewelry, the purpose of it, and it even shows historic pictures of things that were like rediscovered and dug up in archaeological digs, which I think is so interesting, or in a tomb. Super interesting. This is a new book by Kate Straston, and I um, saw that she was writing this, was super interested in it, got it when it first came out. This is The Dress Diary of Mary Ann Sykes. It has a lot of text, but also a lot of pictures, and it's wonderful um, book explaining about this lady who kept a book of swatches of all the things that she had sewn and um, it, it, I have not read the whole book yet but it's wonderful if you want like a snapshot in history of a, a woman who sewed for herself and it says secrets from a Victorian woman's wardrobe and it's wonderfully researched super neat book so if you want something to read and also get inspired by and love some history. This one kind of covers a lot of things. You get some um, some history, you get some fashion, you get to understand uh, the sewing of the person, you get to see the textiles, all of that's in here. And the, the textile section is full color. Um, and it's really neat if you're looking to find um, historic textiles or what was used at the time, this is the place to do it. The book has the pictures and the little writing around it and it's so it's just 
beautiful, very fun. The Dress Diary of Mary Ann Sykes by Kate Straston. This is the Costume History and Style by Prentice Hall. This is an old book. Um, I'm pretty sure I did use this as a textbook, but I can't guarantee it because sometimes I just pick up old textbooks because I'm that way. Another historic, this one has a lot of text. Um, it's broken down by time. It does have pictures in it. So another one, if you're really studying historic costume. This one is good because it has the patterns. It shows you what the pattern shapes were. So this is patterns for theatrical costume, but it also, it, it helps you see like the theatrical costume does give you close to what the historic costume would be. It's not gonna be exactly the same because you've gotta make it work for today, but they show you how it would look. So if you are more interested in um, history bounding or cosplay, or if you do work with a theater group, um, this may be the way to go because it really helps shortcut some of that to give you the historic look and still make it work for quick changes, etc. So this is Patterns for Theatrical Costume. And it does have lots of eras for men and for women, including designs that would be put on the costume that you need to embroider or even um, make patches, that sort of thing. Excellent for that. So those are my historic references. Let's just talk a little bit now about details. I do love, um, I've done sashiko. I love uh, needlework of all kinds. If it's sewing in any way related, I'm interested. And we're back to Reader's Digest. They have a complete guide to needlework. And just like the sewing book, superb. Excellent pictures, explains why you would do it. It has the smocking stuff. It has um, the types of needles. It has stuff for crochet. It has stuff for knitting. It, it, super. Reader's Digest for the win again. Once again, you can pick this up at your secondhand thrift store. Still available at Amazon. Recommend, recommend, recommend. If you only got two books, <laughs> I would send you to Reader's Digest both times because I think they just do such a good job. Now, something else that I um, did for a while that I really loved, I did, I did smock um, when I had little ones, but I also did silk ribbon embroidery. And I took a class, was wonderful, and I walked away with these two books. Um, this one is Silk Ribbon Embroidery by Jenny Bradford. And it's not very big. It has some designs in it and some explanations so you can copy the patterns. And it has wonderful, some good full color pictures in there. And the other one is the, the Art of Silk Ribbon Embroidery by Judith Baker Montano. And this one, I think, the, of the two, this is my preferred book. It's a little more detailed, a little more involved. And it has wonderful full color pictures in it. Um, it also uh, talks about other um, designers and artists in it so you get an idea of who's out there and what they were doing at the time. I'm sure this was again 1990s because I'm pretty sure I took this class. Yeah, 1993. I was thinking it was 1993 or 94 when I took the class. So it has beautiful shoes. Silk ribbon embroidery has been around forever and it has patterns in it. So if you're in for silk ribbon embroidery and there's a lot to that but it's so fun and so elegant and so beautiful. Something else that I love are old pattern books. And they're hard to get and they're expensive, but I have a little collection. This is a Vogue pattern book, winter 1951-1952. And the illustrations are phenomenal in this. So are the models. It's fun to see the way they pose. If you want to reproduce, I know 1950s and 60s are super popular. Lots of people wear them every day in their lives. And look at the pockets. Um, so I have a few of these. I'm careful with them. I have this giant Ziploc bag that they live in. So that's my Vogue. And then look at how big these McCall's. Look at that. This is McCall's three cents in one. Um, this, these are not the pattern books, though. These are just the McCall's magazine. So they have the, um, the short stories in it. They have recipes, beautiful color. Look at how big these magazines were. Um, look at the recipes. I 
got these because if you are studying an era, if you're looking for inspiration or to be, to be accurate, no better way than to go back to the magazines of the time. So this one is 1938. Look at that beautiful cover. And they have some lovely, look, what's going on? Snow White from Disney. Is that not the coolest? Now, I don't sit and just leaf through these because they are pretty delicate. Famous actresses uh, doing ads for palm olive soap. <laughs> so I have a few of these McCall's magazines. This one is, just so you can see the cover. This one is June 1938. And look at the Studebaker on the back. This is the bridal. It's June. It's wedding season. Um, yeah, so fun to see the appliances and that sort of thing. Okay, so those are just a few, believe it or not. I have loads more books, um, but these are the few that I think would be good starters. Uh, I will put, if any that I can find the link to, I know this one's available um, on Amazon, I'm sure, because I just purchased it there, as well as the V&A and some of the others. I will put all of those I, um, in my um, Amazon shop below. Just click on it and you can scroll through. It has things like my sewing desk are in there. My favorite pins are in there. Scissors are in there. My little clips. A lot of stuff that you see me um, using every day and you're like, where did you get that? That cutting table that I love is um, in there. I think this ghost chair, it was at one time, I may have taken it off, but I do put a lot of things like that. If you're interested, you want to get it, you can find it through the Amazon link. If you choose to click through that link, I make a tiny commission. So far, I have made nothing from it, and it's I'm fine with that because the point is really to make them available to you, to make an easy reference for you. So that they will be there um, for you. I would like to know after I've done all this, what is one of your favorite references? Please link it below. People who are here, all of the sewists who are here, would like to know too. We have sewists of um, every nationality and every age and every gender. So if you have a favorite men's book that has great stuff for sewing for men, put it below. Your favorite children's sewing book, whatever. I would love to know. Please. Um, write it in the comments and share with the rest of us. I would like to grow my library. There's always more to learn. I have a question for you. Besides what's your favorite um, sewing reference books, would you guys be interested in a little live sometime? I don't have Patreon. I don't do supers. I don't, I don't have any of that stuff available, but I was considering maybe on a Sunday afternoon or maybe a Thursday evening, something like that, doing a little short Sew With Me live. Um, I even have the project already um, picked out. Um, and I, I don't know if it'd be worth it. I don't know if you would be interested, if you think that would be fun. I'm working on getting uh, someone to help moderate so that I could um, work on this, answer questions, and still communicate with you. So I'm, you know, I'm in the process of that. I haven't tested the whole system yet, but I think it would be really fun and a nice way to get to know you even better. I have some great regulars that I feel like I talk to a lot. We chat a little bit over on Facebook and in the comments, and I kind of feel like I've made some really fun sewing friends through here. I'd like to shout out all, all of you. I, I can think of like 10 names right off the top of my head that I um, feel like are my new sewing friends but it's a great way to kind of grow our community and it's also just a fun way to interact with you so let me know if you would be interested and if you are interested um, what day or time would be best I know I can't make it for everybody whatever I, if we choose to do this I would likely just make it a video later with some timestamps so anyone could come and watch it later if you couldn't be on the live it would still be available um, but it's something I've been thinking about for a while and considering and I've talked to a couple people who might be willing to help me out to uh, to make it happen so leave me another comment <laughs> or you can also I'll probably do a poll at some time and you can uh, leave a comment on that maybe on Sunday I'll put up a poll and ask the same thing all right I'll see you next week for another fun sewing editing Stacy here and I was looking for that fashion, the flat back pattern design book. I found it on Amazon. Let me show you. So I'm going to link this in my story. This is the um, new version. This is what my textbook looked like and this is what I was trying to find. However, 
um, it's harder to get a hold of. They do have them used, of course, because it's old. It, I mean, 1980s is when this came out. So I can get it for like $20. The brand new one's around $50. It's almost a thousand pages long book. Anyway, that's what we're looking for. I will have it linked in the Amazon shop if you're curious or interested in it. Thank you.